I pushed the idea out there that I wanted to do this, even if it meant doing it on my own. And Brad said, look, if this is what it's gonna to take to make you feel like you're back creatively, then this is what we'll do. The way that I deal with the illusionist is I, I offer a lot of freedom. I give a lot of transparency and I expect responsibility from people. And dealing with creative people is completely different. And I realized this really early in the game because I deal with myself that way. You know, in, in the early days, I edited everything myself. I sat there in my, in my little office and, and edited away and stuff. You have to give a lot of leeway. If you're editing a project or you're trying to come up with the idea for it and it, you're not feeling it and you're not there and it's just a grind, let it go, drop out, take the dog for a two hour walk go up to the mountains, get some fresh air, jog yourself, you know, get out of whatever little creative rut that you're in, take your mind off it completely, do something else entirely. And it might not even work for that day. Take the day off then, you know, um, it's much better that way than, than micromanaging. You know, this is the way that I deal with the guys. And this is the way that I deal with Pete Turner. A, f a funny story. We have, um, we have these, you know, weekly calls that everybody dials in we all tell each other where we're at because some some of the people are in Canada some are in the UK some are in California people dotted around the world so we all call in we get on the calls and and go through what we're working on what results we produced and you know what the ideas are for this week and that kind of thing and uh, we get Pete Turner on the line and one day we heard all this clanking in the background and we're like where the F or you and he's like oh I'm under the car yeah I'm, I'm working on a, I'm working on a car right now but I'm here I've got my phone well I'll report in I'll tell you what I've been doing you know we might get him working on a car we might once we, we heard water splashing in the background I'm like what are you doing and he's like oh I'm in the bath yeah he likes to take baths Pete Turner you know this is where he gets his creativity from. So we understand that this is what creative people do, you know? And I tell people, you know, if you're not feeling it, go get, get out of the house, go to Starbucks, set up your laptop in Starbucks and work from Starbucks, you know? Just get a different atmosphere. You have to let yourself have permission to do whatever the frick you feel like in the moment. And for the last 28 days, I've lived my life like the Dice Man. And that's what you're about to watch. So I asked people for random destinations and I took those destinations and I wrote them down. Rochester. Normandy in West Yorkshire. I'd choose Mallorca. Twat in the Auckland Islands. And there were only one stipulation. These destinations must either be in the UK or they must be on the green list because they were the only places that I could travel to. And so I take a dice and I roll it and it comes up that I'm going to Spain. So I'm smiling from ear to ear because I'm thinking I had the choice between going to all of England or Spain, Spain's the much better choice. So I write down how I'm going to get there. So I write motorbike, I write down plane, I write down truck, I write down car, I write down boat, I write all these random things out and I roll it and it rolls that I'm going to go in the truck. And so I'd never driven to Spain, I'd never driven across Europe before, I'd never drove into France before. So I call Mark up excitedly and I say, Mark, we're driving to Spain and Mark says, I've just moved house. I can't afford to take that much time out. I rang Dwayne. Dwayne said, absolutely not. So it looked like I were on my own. So I quickly jumped on the internet, looked up the best route from where I'm in Wakefield down to Mallorca. And I quickly realized that it's not as easy as it sounds. It's going to be well over 30 hours driving. That's without stops in between. The requirements at the border. I'd have to travel from Wakefield right down to the Euro tunnel at the bottom of the country. Then from the Euro tunnel over to Calais, then from Calais in France, all the way through France to get into Spain. Then from there, I'd have to travel down to Salou, go past Salou to get to the port, then drive the truck onto a ferry that'd take me across to Mallorca or to Parma, and then drive from Parma to wherever the, the guys were going to be in Mallorca. And that's a ridiculous amount of travel. It was going to take a few days to get there. So I finally get into France. I come out of the Euro tunnel, I drive up the hill and onto the motorway. And so I'm driving and I'm driving and it's going on for hours and hours and hours. This repetition of the same shit over and over again. Road, bollards, workmen, cars, trees, 
over and over and over. And then I receive a text message from Mark and Dwayne, and it's a picture of them in the pool in the middle of Spain enjoying a cool beer. And I'm understandably pissed off at this point. And so I decide, you know what, I'm just going to stop over wherever I am and I'm going to make a dice roll. I'm going to see what comes up. So I pulled over at the side of the road and understandably I were miffed off and I were at the lowest there, I think, that I'd been on the entire trip so far. And it wasn't because anybody else had pushed me into this. It was because I'd stupidly entered into this off my own back. And so I thought, you know what, let's freshen things up. I'll, I'll do another dice roll and... One of the roles were that I'd quit illusionist and another was that I'd turn back round and go back home. And another one was that I'd just scrap the project. Another one was that I'd go somewhere else entirely and make Mark and Dwayne come to me. One of them was that I was just going to stop where I was. And I rolled and it was that I was going to be camping in the mountains. And I thought that was one of the weaker options on the list. And when I climbed out of the truck, I quickly realised that it wasn't. Dwayne and Mark might have been enjoying a beer, but I were drinking in this incredible view that were in front of me. And it was life-changing just to stand there and just see how peaceful and serene everything was. And so I went and got some supplies and I camped right there on the top of that mountain in Spain. And it was such an incredible experience that you know what, if I could have spent a few more days there, I would. It's amazing. Made my way down to the port after a couple of days of enjoying the sunshine, a few beers myself, good meals, all courtesy of the dice roll, and I ended up in Mallorca. And meeting the boys were an absolute treat. And so I get them to make some silly options for the dice rolls. And one of them was that we were going to have a few beers, stay in the pool, but that I'd have to jump off the villa roof. And Mark were like, I'll have a bit of that as well. And I said to him, you won't, because you said to me that you weren't going to be part of it. Anyway, he knew I was joking. We got up onto the villa roof and we jumped off. And as I weighed significantly more than Mark, when we jumped into the pool, Mark curled up and he were fine, but I pencil jumped in and I smashed my ankle off the bottom of the pool. So I'd sprained my ankle and I were due to start filming the stuff for this project. But that's not all. I don't handle the sun very well. So I got sunstroke. My throat was sore. I couldn't breathe. I was drinking as much water as possible, but I had migraines. And I had to go out there with this sunstroke and I had to still perform. And I can tell you that performing on the strip in Magaluf is unlike performing anywhere else in the world. If you can perform in these environments and you can perform on the strip, can perform anywhere. There's people knocking the cameras, there's people pouring drinks over you, there's people wanting to fight you, there's people wanting to grab you, there's people wanting to ban you off the street, there's people seeing the cameras and interrupting in the middle of performances, simply because people were just being an absolute pain in the ass. So I went down to the strip and that were about a mile walk from where the apartment was. Dwayne had gone off to film Victor Pineapple and he were an interesting character, a really good guy. And I got down onto the strip and performed a few things. And we also found a little bar called Tom's Bar and you'll get to see those performances. Can I bury your hands? This requires you listening to me. Put your feet flat on the floor. Push your hand down and just lock it into the table. And now look right at me, right here. Don't worry about anything else. I want you to imagine there are no other sounds in this bar other than the sound of my voice. And as you listen to the sound of my voice, you're going to notice that your hand starts to feel like it's getting heavier. Give me a nod when you feel it. Right there, and it starts to feel heavier and heavier and heavier. And from here to here becomes irrelevant, as it feels like it's locking, solid, welded, bonded. Your eyes are starting to glaze. It feels really strange, right? How heavy does it feel? Give me a nod when you just know you can't move it. There, it's locked, stuck into the table. Try lift it. <laughs> Look, you can now. <laughs> can I take it a step further? Yeah. What's your name? Cameron. Cameron, put your hand down. Your hand's shaking a bit. 
Imagine that feeling travels from here into your elbow, up into your shoulder and then into your throat and at the thought of saying your own name your tongue sticks just like you're handed to the table and no matter how hard you try to say it, it just feels like it won't come out try it in your head, imagine saying it and you'll feel your tongue doing it give me a nod when you feel it there, yeah? you can say anything else on the planet apart from that one thing look, he could speak and say anything else what's his name? now try say your own name <laughs> Try even harder to say your name. He can't, it's impossible to say his own name. What's his name? Nathan. How old are you? 18. What did you say your name was? <laughs> and watch, just as just as quick as it went, watch. Comes back, what's your name? <laughs> <laughs> Hard, impossible. Yeah. Try even harder. Now look, you can lift it. It's weird, right? It's one of those, it's one of those really, really weird things. Turn around, come on. Turn around. Alright. Oh, right. And there, yeah, so I touch you. Open your eyes. I never came anywhere near you, Will. You touched me, Will. I'm not even joking. Does Luke's girlfriend know what he's done? Oh, 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 <laughs> when you go back to England, say hello to Joanna for me. Oh my oh, god! god. Oh, my. That's so crazy. Oh my god! <laughs>
first digit in your PIN code, every single person, in fact, do you know what? Look, everybody shout what the first digit is. choose between erasing every single memory you ever had and never being able to keep those memories and only make memories from today or keeping every single memory you ever had but never being able to make a single memory again which would you choose think about that it's an interesting question isn't it is there anybody here that decided that they'd erase their old memories in favor of making new ones so over here, here, a few people. You'd make new ones as well? You'd make new ones? Can you stand up for me a second? You decided that you'd erase all your old memories in favor of making new ones. Can you think of one memory that you'd keep, that you just couldn't live without, one emotional piece of baggage that you'd carry with you forever? Is there any way on earth that I could know this piece of information? So just hold your hand like this for me. This is really strange. Does, uh, I, I sometimes just get it flashing. Does tartan make sense to you? Does that sort of resonate? Okay, I think I know what this is. Is this a kilt? Some sort of kilt or something like that? And do you know, would you know what this memory is as well? Now I mentioned the kilt. Can you, can you stand up? Now again, I'm not promising results, but I'm gonna try. I can tell straight away looking at you, you sort of crossed your arms, so I'd say this is a fairly emotional memory. Uh, something that, and I can see it here already. It's okay. You're happy with me sharing this, because if you're not... I'm almost picking up on this sense of a, a name that's associated with this thing. Does that sort of make sense to you? Yeah. Just imagine sending it to me. And I'm not gonna use the mic for this bit. I want you to imagine it's just you and me. That's it, there's nobody else here. And you can hear my heart beating all the way over there. And I can hear yours. Nobody else in this room's important, it's just me and you. And you can feel my heart there, right? It's just us. I don't know what this is. What's the name? That's what I went for as well. And I'm gonna tell you that I can see this memory now, right? And and there's a reason that it's so brilliant, because it, it has to be one of the days that you'd never forget. This would be a wedding day, wasn't it? Give her a round of applause. <laughs> I snap my fingers, just close your eyes down and don't say anything. So close your eyes now. Take a deep breath in. Now, it's essential that Emily genuinely can't see us. Keeping your eyes closed, Emily. You can tell by the sound of my voice I'm not next to you now, correct? Yeah. And I'm not touching you now. No. But you did just feel me tap you. Yeah. Good. Can I ask you a few more questions about your feelings, Emily? Yeah. Keeping your eyes closed. Out of interest, when you just felt me tap you, and if you're torn between two numbers, that's fine. How many times did you feel me tap you? Twice. Okay. Open your eyes a second. Relax. Can I ask you a few more questions? Yeah. Take a deep breath in. Close your eyes again. Let your head come forwards. The last tap you felt, how did it feel different to the taps before it? Harder in the back. Harder in the back? So the last tap, not on the head, not on the arm, but on the back, were I much harder. Yes, were much harder. The touch on the head was softer. Softer, okay, and the touch on the arm was softer. But the one on the back, how did that feel? Mm. Much harder. Can you point to where you fell it and turn yeah. around and show us all? Okay. Open your eyes. Oh my god! Oh come on! He didn't touch it once. Oh my god! So he's linked to such good friends. That's it. It's a link that exists between. <laughs> 
Yeah, I was touching her and you were feeling it. Oh my god, that's what I've always wanted. <laughs> that was amazing. Really good. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Thank you for playing. For this to work, you all need to really pay attention and then need total silence because you'll never see anything like this again. What's your name? In a moment, Mikhail, I'm going to snap my fingers like this. And when I do, I want you to close your eyes. So when I snap my fingers, close your eyes. Close them down now. Now. Now keep your eyes closed and don't say anything unless I ask. Now it's essential that Adora can't see her. Can't see me. That's important. Keep your eyes closed, Mikhail. You can tell by the sound of my voice I'm not next to you now, correct? And I'm not touching you now. But you did just feel me tap you. <coughs> but you did just feel me tap you. Good. What the? Wait a second, close your eyes. Can I ask you a few more questions, Adora? Out of interest, when you just felt me tap you, and if you're torn between two numbers, how many times did I tap you? It was like two or three. Ah! No, 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 no. Yes. No. Okay, I'll tell you what, open your eyes a second. Relax, can I ask you a few more questions? Take a deep breath in, close your eyes down. Close your eyes again. The last tap you felt, how did it feel different to the taps before it? Uh, it was a bit harder. Harder? Now I obviously touched you on your head and your arm, but where did you feel that last firm tap point to it? Jesus Christ. Oh, no, get out of here. Oh, he didn't touch you, he didn't touch you once. Oh, no. Where did you feel the last tap? Not on my back. Where, show me, show me. He was touching me on my back. <laughs> You're scaring me. He was touching me on my back. Take your hands like this. I fucking hate this, but I love and it. And just put your hands together like this and lock your fingers. What's your name? Hannah. Do you mind if I touch your arms, Hannah? You can touch. Now, Hannah, what you're going to notice is as I start to talk to you, you're relaxing. You have a great concentration for this. You're going to notice as you're pushing your left hand into your right and you're right into your left that your hands start to feel like they're getting tighter. Not when you start to feel that. Right about there as they get tighter and tighter and tighter. As your left sticks into your right, your right sticks into your left. And it starts to feel like the rest of your arms just are relevant. As your hands start to lock, weld, bond together to the point you know you can't open them. Give me a nod when you feel they're completely locked. Right about there. Try open them. It's impossible to open them, right? I am trying. And look, now you can. <laughs> How strange is that? Can I take your hand? Horrible. Imagine that feeling runs from here, up your arm, into your shoulder, and into Why your throat. Me to this <laughs> and at, at the thought of saying your own name, just like your hands stuck together, your throat starts to feel like it just can't get your name out. Anything else on the planet you can say, but when it comes to your name, your mouth just locks and it won't let it happen. Try saying your name. <laughs> My name's Pete. Say my name. Easy, right? <laughs> Try say your name. <laughs> Impossible. Now look. Comes back. What's your name? Anna. <laughs> Thank you for playing. You're wonderful. You'll be perfect for this. Look at me. Take a deep breath in. Look right into my eyes. Just let your eyes close down for me. Putting your feet together, I'm, I'm going to touch you like this and I'm going to relax you like this. Keeping your eyes closed, you can't see me. In a moment, you're going to feel yourself going back and when you do, he's going to catch you. Yeah. Good, you're not going to fall yet. You feel this? When you feel it. Now listen, I met Peter Turner here in Old Jaffa, he came over to see me and he blew my mind. He's, he's shown me things that I've been around for a long time, I've never seen. I don't know how he does it. Peter was really pushing it and Pete understood the out on purpose thing so he could do things that would be absolutely frightening to other people. And I watched him go to Vegas and fool big name friends of mine doing just that, taking giant risks in front of big crowds. Pete knows how to take this stuff and apply it in ways that are really successful and natural for him. 
And I think that that's why more and more people got excited about what Pete was doing because Pete seemed to do a lot of impossible, real looking things uh, without a whole lot of props or junk. It was just seemingly real mentalism. Just to say a few words about Peter, um, he's very fluent, very intelligent, but a deep thinker. So everything he says has a sort of meaning and that's really what magic should be about. Not just d demonstrating tricks, but making it f feel like a major miracle and that's what he does. I often get asked what happens when I'm out on stage in front of say 500 or 1000 people. What happens if I can't read the mind of the person I bring up on stage? Yeah. I can't obviously send them back and the worst thing on the planet is when somebody pulls a mobile phone out and starts to record you and you just fall flat on your ass in front of everybody. So I created what they call an insurance policy. Okay. Right, and that's my insurance policy. For now, all I want you to do is just sign the back of that. This side, yeah? Just sign it, yeah. And just place that down there for me. Now, you didn't see what were on the other side of it? No. No, good. That's important. Okay. There's a reason I've asked you to write down your signature on the back of that. It's because you'll know if I swap that out, there's only yeah. one of these pieces of card. Yeah. Right, so you okay. notice it, yeah? Yeah. What I want you to do for me is take this piece of card. Yeah. And at the top, keep it hidden, don't even let me see it so you can pick it up. I want you to write down a random three digit number. It could be any three digit number you want. And then right next to that, put a little times key, an X. A little X. A little X, like a time symbol. Yeah. And then under that, put another three digit number. Okay. And then put a plus symbol. Yeah. And then under that, put a two digit number. Okay. And then a little equal symbol. And I'll take the pen back. What you've done there is created a formula that you're about to add up. Yeah. You're not gonna let us see the total you take that. If you make a mistake, don't worry, just say I've made a mistake. So take your time. If you do make a mistake, don't do anything, just say I've made a mistake, all right? Okay. And then press equals. Yeah. Have you arrived at a total there that you think you could remember? This is not so vastly long that you're not gonna yeah. be able to remember it. Okay. You think you can remember that? Yeah. So just say it to yourself a few times and then when it's done, erase it out and place it face down here. And you can just hide that face down there so I don't see it. Now, this has been sat here since before the beginning. Yeah. Now, obviously I can't know what number it is you're thinking of. There's no way yeah. that I could. But if you look at this fleety, I have got a number written on here and you can see these specific trigger words that I'm gonna use to make Ash completely forget what number she's thinking of and replace it with this one, right? <laughs> don't panic, it's all right. Think all you've got to do, all you've got to do is just keep saying it to yourself. Now, it's going to feel really strange. Now, forget any suggestions you think I'm throwing at you. What I need you to do is just remember the one number that you saw. Yeah. And genuinely, you had a freedom of choice to go for absolutely any number you wanted. Yeah. Right? Um, does it feel now like you've forgotten that number? I'm not going to lie. I've got one digit. Okay. I've got, I've got a choice out of two digits. Okay. Be, but, right. but you're starting to forget, which is good. Yeah, I've got like three numbers. Okay, so what I want you to do is just focus on the one number in your head that you saw, and right now, what's your brain telling you the number is? 4213. 4213? Yeah. 4213 is what you're saying, 4213. I think so. Which is good, because your brain's not sure, it's really, but it's good, look, look. Let, let me show no, you something. No, it is, it's 4213. Well, you've committed now, which is good. I'm, I'm committed. But it does honestly feel inside yourself somewhere that you might have just forgotten. Yeah, it's, it's definitely those four numbers. All right, well look, these are what I decided <gasps> no. I were going to put into your head, right? Four, two, one, three, and I use that language. Do you remember no, me saying? How did you get to here? Well, do you remember me saying uh, forget? So forget two, one, three. But listen, I'm going to have to add this up. And... Well, well, that's check, the intro. Check, check my number. Well, look, if my number is the same number as that. Well then, how that... good would that? Well, do you know what would be even better? If it wasn't the same and I'd made you forget the one number you actually added up to arrive at this, that'd be even more impressive because I won't even need to read your mind. I'll tell you what, you take your time, add it back up. Nowhere near. <laughs> That's cool. No, I'm gonna, no. Do you wanna add it back up, please? That's the insurance policy you created to Prove to yourself. I never saw that, I never looked at it. I'm dead. <laughs> it's 
It's weird, isn't it? Because you know in your head somewhere that there's that hazy feeling that you're not quite sure. You remember the four and you remember the one, but you just didn't quite remember the order. And it started to feel really weird, right? Like it was there on the tip of your tongue, but as soon as I started speaking, what did it feel like? As soon as I told you, you were gonna forget. All I remember the whole time that you were speaking was four, right at the beginning. That's all I remember. Looking at that four, I thought, oh, that's easy. They're all low numbers in my head straight away. I thought four, two, one, three, they're all low, aren't they? Low, so I thought, remember it's all low. And it was just these trigger words that made you think of them. That's really good. It's weird, isn't it? Thank you for playing, Ash. What number is it you're thinking of? Four, two, one, three. Four, two, well, <laughs> Salah. That's the number that I did try to break in. Right? But I know what you're thinking. It didn't really feel like that you'd ever forgotten it, right? No, it didn't, no. But we created an insurance policy. Yeah. The formula. I'll tell you what, open your phone a second. Oh, are you, am I allowed to swear? Yeah. Oh, you. <laughs> Open it up. Let's re add it back up and let's see. Oh. 61, 16, 711. Yes. <laughs> Completely different. No, but that's. Ah. No, it's not. <laughs> Proving 100% that if you're ever in a situation, Silo, where you're going to fail, all you've got to do is use this language and you're home free. Dude, that's so what else do you think you've forgotten? Oh, my signature. No, not your signature. There's something a lot more important than that. I have no idea. Do you remember taking your earrings off? I'm just joking. <laughs> 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 I've got all my jewellery, all right? <laughs> ah, I'm only joking. I didn't have you do anything else. I actually bought a minute then. I thought, there is no way to take it back. less than 24 hours to find a gig in central London. It's for a series of high corporate clients that work for a, a bank called So I'm getting dressed now because uh, I always carry a suit in the car just in case because I found myself in situations like this where somebody will offer you a set or a gig somewhere and it's always best to carry the kind of clothing you might need. When your hand touches a table, you close your eyes. I picked Oliver for this for a very specific reason. Everybody else, you can let your hands go apart. If we'd have done another minute or two of this, how difficult are yours? Like really difficult, right? And yours start to feel really heavy. And around the table, what I do is I pick the people that are really receptive towards this type of stuff. But I feel, just based on the fact that you were so upfront about doing this, that you'll be perfect for this. Now in a minute, Oliver, what's gonna happen is you're gonna feel me apply a specific pressure on certain parts of your body. So for example, if you feel me press you here, you just relax your arm. If you feel me press you here, you relax your wrist. If you feel me pressing you here, you relax your hand. If you ever feel this pressure here, I want you just to relax your throat till you stop talking and then you let it back off. That's it. So keeping your eyes closed, tell me your name and a little bit about yourself. So just start speaking and when you feel that pressure come on, you just let your voice stop and it starts to just relax your voice box. So start speaking. Tell us about, give us a paragraph about you. Uh, so my name's Oliver. Carry on, so your name's Oliver and you're from? Dorset. Uh, we moved to Ascot when I was in my GCSE levels. Um, that was where I gen what? That was where I generated my love for geography and things sustain. <laughs> and that was the passion that um, led me to study geography at.
So what you just saw there is some footage from the stage show and some footage from the corporate event and I will be talking about how you can achieve those things later when we get into the explanations. But I remember leaving that corporate event and that were a paid event by the way, jumping in the car and then travelling all the way back up north, I had to drop Dwayne off. I'm ill, run down. I'm at the end of it ever with the dice. Do you know, I was reading like about celebrities that messed about with the dicemen. And Richard Branson, one of those celebrities, and he said that he only managed to last 24 hours living by the roll of a dice. I'm falling asleep whilst I'm talking by the way. 24 hours. And the reason that he only managed 24 hours is because he deemed it too dangerous. We're up weeks in. I'm losing weight. Look at my clothes. I'm run down. I'm not eating properly. I'm not sleeping properly. There's some great aspects and elements of it. And it was fun for about the first week. And the only reason that I'm sticking it out is because I have res more respect for my followers than to quit halfway through it. If it had been just for me, or it had been just for you, I'd have quit after the first week. Yeah, I'm tired. Sorry if I sound grouchy. So I drive home from the corporate event, I drop Dwayne off, come home, I flatline and I sleep for about 15 hours. And when I woke up, the first thing on my mind was where the dice were gonna choose next. So I wrote down six destinations. I'm gonna be really honest, I wrote six destinations that I'd be comfortable traveling to because at this point in the journey, I were about to quit. It would make or break, I was so tired. I'd been run down and ill, and I'd just not slept properly. There were so many highs and so many lows. And at the lowest point, I felt more depressed than I've ever felt in my life. Oh, hell. So it's after four. I don't know if you can tell, but my eye is swollen. Um, I'm done. I just cannot, for the life in me, do this anymore. And the reason that I felt more depressed than I'd ever felt depressed is because I were experiencing such lows and things that I'd never subject myself to that when the highs came about, they felt so high, even if they were just moderate things. And I rolled the dice and look at it, it came up with my hometown in Bradford, which is about an hour away from where I am now. So I called a good friend of mine, Kenny. If you've followed my story, you'll have seen Kenny in the past. Kenny's one of those guys that whenever he gets a new bar, he'll call me up and say, Pete, can you come round and can you perform? Now he was one of the first people to ever give me a chance. So no matter what I'm doing, no matter where I am in my career, I'll always go back to Kenny and Karen's bars because they're like family to me. So I went over to the Smiling Mule in Bradford. This is one of those working men's clubs that I talked about earlier. If you can't keep these people's attention, then you're gonna fall flat on your ass. Enjoy a few of the performances from the Smiling Mule and you start to feel it getting heavier and heavier. Give me a nod when you start to feel it getting heavier. Right about there, as it starts to push tighter, locked, welded, bonded, stuck in at the table, as it starts to feel like it's getting heavier. You can feel it, right? You're doing incredible and it starts to get tight. It's all about concentration. It only works with certain people, but it starts to get tighter and tighter and tighter. And you start to feel it becoming uncomfortable as it gets locked, welded, bonded, stuck down. You can feel that, right? Mm -hmm. Give me a nod when you feel you just can't lift it. Right about there, yeah? <laughs> as it's locked down and as you're staring at me now try lift it <laughs> and look you can now thumbs up but look that feeling moves from there that tightness and it goes up into your arm and into your throat and at the thought of saying your own name your tongue sticks to the base of your mouth just like your hand stuck to the table and it starts to feel like it's getting tighter thinking of your own name any other words absolutely easy but you start to feel your tongue sticking and there it is you start to feel it going just at the thought of saying your own name but saying anything else is like a breath of fresh air and it just wants to come out try saying your name say it <laughs> and it gets tighter and tighter and tighter and it gets stuck even more until it's just gone completely gone now Try saying your name. And look, what's his name? Chris. 
<laughs> and look, but yours won't come out. It just sticks tighter and tighter and tighter and it locks itself. It just won't come out and it starts to feel like a bottle of pop fizzing up as you're trying there. You can see it in your face as it's getting red. And what happens is, I'm not gonna do this with your current pin code, but what happens is in your head now, <coughs> your name, just like these digits start to change, the letters changes into a pin code from an old bank and it starts to form and it feels like it's genuinely your name. And in a minute when I ask you to say your name, it's not gonna come out to start with, but when I snap my fingers and it comes out, your name's not gonna come out. The pin code to your old bank card's gonna come out as it starts to feel like it's changing in there now and it's getting tighter and tighter and tighter and you're looking at me and you're gonna try say it, watch what happens. Try saying it, try saying your name. And it's not coming, look, and you're looking right at me and it's not. And when I snap my fingers, watch what comes out and said. Say it. <laughs> and that's... You know what, you can breathe, you relax. And look, now you can say your name, what's your name? Good. <laughs> So if you don't know what the four minute mile is, basically it's the industry standard now to qualify for any type of professional race. But what's really cool about the four minute mile is that everybody thought it was physically impossible. The best runners in the world were coming in at four minutes two, four minutes three, and somebody that had never even heard of the four minute mile came along and smashed the record. And the moment that they did that, every racer that had ever failed before that point succeeded, right? And it was because the belief were there that they could do it, and that's why, yeah, that's why they managed to. That, the block was the belief that they couldn't do it. So just close your eyes a second. And I want you to imagine that, that we were in a jiu-jitsu gym, and we're sparring, right? We are eyes closed. What do you think your chances are of being able to block the moves that are coming towards you? Slim. <laughs> yeah, so open your eyes a second, right? Oh, okay. But by restricting one of your senses, what happens is your confidence in yourself goes down dramatically. Yes. Right? Take your fingers and just put them on the deck like this for me. Okay. Just move your hand back just a little bit, just yeah. there. Yeah. And okay. I want you just to push down and towards me. So you can feel that you can't push them because my fingers are stopping you from physically yes. stopping you from doing it. Yes. So close your eyes down for a second. Okay. And as you're pushing them towards me, I want you to feel me pushing it back towards you. And as you feel it, you can feel how difficult it is to push, right? Open your eyes. <laughs> well, <laughs> oh, you're never touching it. I first met Pete Turner roughly about 11 years ago when I was doing a small venue. Pete came in as um, one of the audience members and since then we've been good friends. If anybody's ever been to pubs in Bradford, not all pubs obviously, but some of the pubs uh, and some of the clubs that he's played in, yeah, they're, they're, they're difficult to hold a crowd, hold an audience. It doesn't matter who you are, what you're doing, if you stop for a second or you flinch for a second in performance in these venues, they're going to eat you like a pack of wild dogs. I was doing a show and a woman came out, came out of the toilet and said, somebody's shit in the sink, this is the lady's toilet, so somebody literally in, a, in the sink of the toilet. So I stopped the show then until they cleaned it, cleaned the toilet up, then restarted the show as if nothing had happened. Um, people fighting in venues. I've seen a, a young lad get so drunk that when his mum tried to take him out of the bar, he bit her thumb clean off. And I thought it's such an interesting environment to try to perform that type of material because if it's gonna fail anywhere, that's where it's gonna fail. And I, I got thinking, well, what other environments might this fail in? So I wrote a series of different scenarios out and I rolled the dice and it came up a dojo. So I quickly scrambled through Facebook to see if I saw anybody that were a martial artist that I knew. And I remembered I know an instructor. So I got in contact with this instructor and I said, could we come over to your dojo? Could I take over one of the lessons and teach some of your students some of this stuff? And I asked if I could get involved and show them a few things. And I decided to be bold and to teach the instructor exactly how to knock somebody over without ever touching them. And so the footage that you're about to watch is the instructor learning that. And then at the same time, I'll also show you some of the other techniques that I performed and demonstrated on another instructor and a few other students. So enjoy. So, 
right now, uh, I'm in a position where I've not met anybody in this class. If anybody's ever met me before, apart from the instructor, raise your hands and let everybody know now. What I want you to do for me is think of a random object, item or thing that you don't feel that I could guess. Now this has got to be something that I recognise, so if you go for a, a faucet tap or a flange washer, I'm not going to recognise those things, even if you've seen them. The only rule is it's got to be something you feel I might have seen in my life. Now, how long is it you've been training for? Uh, probably just about three months now. So three months. So over three months, have you found that you're becoming more disciplined? Yes, definitely. And, and yeah. more focused? Yeah, for sure. So we're going to play a game. It's obviously a lot like less physical than uh, ripping lumps out of each other. The idea is that you've got to stop me getting inside your head. So if you feel at any point I'm starting to probe around inside there, you've got to counter and stop me from getting in. Mm -hmm. And in three questions, I'm going to try to work out exactly what it is that you're thinking of and all you've got to do is answer honestly. So first question, the thing that you're thinking of right now, is this something that you feel I'd have seen before? Yes. Second question, is this something that you physically touched yourself before? Yes. So there was a slight pause there, but it were relatively quick, so this would be something that... Okay, last question. And if you, if you feel that the answer is going to give away instantly what this is, mm -hmm. feel free to lie, right? Is this thing sweet smelling? No. Okay. And there's a slight smirk here, which either tells me you're trying to throw me off or it is sweet smelling, which makes this incredibly difficult. I'm going to go for this. I don't know if I'm, I don't know if I'm going to be perfect on this. I, I felt this is organic. This is something that you could pick if you wanted to, but is this a flower of some sort? Yeah. Yes, did you go for a poppy poppy flower? Yeah. Perfect. Give him a round of applause for that. Right? Ah, it's cool. Are you happy to try something out that requires a little bit of concentration and it, and it involves something that's very, very connected to what it is that you do here? Yeah. I want you to put your feet together for me and you guys just stand behind him because if he's going to fall in a second, I want you to catch him. I want you just to relax. I'm going to touch you here like this. Just relax. Close your eyes. Don't lock yourself up. Relax because if you're going to go back, when you feel like you're gonna go back, I just want you to let it happen. Now, you can't see me. You're just relaxing. There we go, it's perfect. And in a moment, you're gonna feel yourself go back. And when you feel it, I just want you to let it happen. Now, you can feel this, yeah? When you feel it, you'll start swaying. When you feel yourself go back, you just let yourself go. Give me your hands. You all right? Yeah. Keep your feet together for me. Feel your lungs as you just go down, sleep completely down like that, just relaxing for me for a few seconds, keeping your hands into your side. In a moment, I'm gonna open your eyes and I'm gonna take you over to the side and I'm gonna put a hypnotic suggestion in your head, not if you understand. You're gonna listen carefully to that hypnotic suggestion, then we're gonna come back to the floor and we're gonna try something that can only be described as impossible. But what I really want you to do now for me is from the bottom of your feet, right up into your legs, into your throat, just start to fill yourself with relaxed, positive air as you slowly let that out for a few seconds. And when I count from one to three, you're gonna open your eyes, I'll help you back up, and then I'm gonna give you a suggestion and we'll bring you back to the mat. So take a deep breath in. That's one, two, and three. You open your eyes for me, give me a hand. You're doing incredibly, mate, thank you. Right, we'll be back in one second. It's just the certain suggestions that I can't give in front of you guys, because if it happens to you and you go home, I can't take that off once you've left. And I don't wanna leave somebody with that at least I can control one person and make sure it's off of the one person before you go. So give me uh, two minutes and chat amongst yourself. You could come and help me. We were just messing around and you saw how quickly it is to take somebody out or how to knock somebody over without touching them. Now I'm not claiming that that's chi. I'm, all I'm claiming that is, is that there's certain suggestions that I'm putting in your brain to make certain things happen. You know, and, and what I'm about to show you now is very similar to that. To, to show you the importance of words and how one word in your vocabulary can completely change the way that you act and the way that 
people around you act towards you. And I'll give you a good example. I mean, if I asked you all what this is, the answer is really simple. It's a pen, it's a Sharpie marker pen. It weighs absolutely nothing and it came from this pot down here. We're gonna play a game. Now it's important that everybody at home knows that I haven't said to you before the camera were rolling, please play along, be an actor, be a stooge, or anything like that. Daz, just for everybody watching, if you just put your fingers around this pen for me, and you lift it up, how much would you say that weighs, if you were to guess? Nothing. Nothing at no, all, nothing right? There. You hold your own hand out so that people don't think that. Is this your dominant hand or your non-dominant hand? Uh, this is my dominant. So you, you take this hand and you yeah, place yeah. it like this, and just put your fingers around the pen again and take a deep breath in for me and just close your eyes. In a moment when I ask you to open your eyes, you're gonna look back down and instead of imagining there being a pen in your non-dominant hand, you're gonna imagine there's a brick. It's a very heavy brick and one you wouldn't be accustomed to holding like this, not if you understand. It's gonna feel very strange because when you look down at it, your brain's gonna register it as a pen, but there's gonna be something inside you that just says this is a very heavy brick. When you count from one to three, open your eyes and look down at this heavy brick and start to imagine its quality. So one, two, three, open your eyes and look down at it. Whilst looking down at that and keeping your fingers round it, I want you now to try to lift that up. How does it feel when you're trying to lift it, Daz? So. Try even harder for me to lift it. And no matter how hard you try, it becomes more and more impossible. But just as fast as it became heavy, watch, it becomes light and you can lift it. And it feels really strange, right? <laughs> As that's, that feeling really weird. travels from there up into inside your elbow, into your shoulder and into your throat and at the thought of saying your own name, just like the pen turned into a brick, your tongue is going to feel very heavy and it's going to start to stick and it's going to feel very strange when you try to say your own name, but anything else you'll be able to say. In fact, you know what, while staring at this brick, try saying your name. Try even harder. What's his name? Francis. It's really easy when you're saying anything else, right? Try yeah. even harder to say your own name. And look, now you can say it. It's a, weird, it's a really, really weird thing, right? <laughs> How your brain can do those backflips. This is what I want you to do for me. I want you to take your time to think about somebody that means something to you that I couldn't just guess. Right. Somebody that maybe Francis doesn't know, somebody that's not on the social media, mm -hmm. somebody that you feel would be impossible for me to just pluck out of thin air mm -hmm. and tell when you've got a name in your head. Yeah. I'll take the pen back for a second. Turn facing me. There you go, look. The next time you see Simon, say hello from me. No way. <laughs> oh, you're having a laugh. <laughs> How? What? There's no way you knew that name. Genuinely a free choice. You could have picked That's... anybody on the planet. I'm staggered. Absolutely staggered. Thank I... you for playing, I... Daz. <laughs> That's blown Give me away. Give him a round of applause. That's blown me away. Honestly, that. Wow. Perfect, Daz. So... If you want to stand here, and again, you're going to let Daz go back as far as you feel comfortable letting him go back. Just put your feet together for me, Daz. Mm -hmm. Francis, you step in. I'm going to help you with this. Yeah. And so you're just going to let yourself, if you feel yourself going back, so don't lock your legs. Your body's got to be one like a board. And if you feel yourself going back, you're going to let yourself go back and they'll catch you. So you don't need okay. to move your legs. You're going to keep your legs locked together. Close your eyes for a second. Francis, mm -hmm. step in front of Daz and just put your hand where I showed you like this. And grip, you've got to grip, and then your left hand on the shoulder here like this, and push, you've got to push, and you'll feel that, Daz. Mm -hmm. And you just start to rock him, like this, just there. Take your time. If you feel yourself going back, you're gonna let yourself go back. So start by letting go of this. You can feel that, Daz, right? And now you let your hand come back completely. You're not gonna push him, you just keep, your, keep him still there. Bring your hand back. Get in tune with his breathing and watch what happens when you move. Almost. Just relaxing there, Dad, so you're not going to fall. Put your hand where mine is, Francis. Remember, when you feel it, when you feel yourself going back, Dad, you let yourself go back. You don't push him over, though. Then bring your hand back. 
and in your head just will it and it'll happen Francis <laughs> yeah so uh, my name's Francis I'm an instructor here at uh, doing the jiu-jitsu classes um, and again when Pete told me that I could be able to knock somebody down without even touching them I was thinking like no way how can how can that be, be possible but when Peter asked if anyone wanted to give it a go I thought well yeah I'm, I'm really up for trying some new things and obviously I gave it a little bit of a go found it you know a little bit tricky at first but again within like less than a couple of minutes you know I was able to do it and again I was just you know really weird experience but you know really yeah, really nice to you know be able to actually feel that and feel that it's working. And again, it didn't take too much for me to be able to, to learn to be able to do that. So yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. So this is the point where stuff got really tiring during my Diceman journey. Things got hazy. There were so many different rolls of the dice, food types, traveling, and I got really tired. I'm tired now, and I still haven't slept properly as a result of, of this trip. But at one point I ended up at a house party and I want to cut in some of the footage from the house party just so you can see how potent this stuff is, even in those social situations. And the performance that you're about to see in that, that situation goes a little bit beyond the 10 techniques that I'm sharing with you on this set. But with a little bit of imagination, you'll be able to easily do this stuff if you follow what Mark and I talk about on the jam session. So enjoy the, the footage from this house party. So I don't know if you can hear the noise behind me. I've been booked to do a 21st birthday party, so you know things are about to get wild. This is the second booking that I've had getting out of COVID. So it's all a bit strange for everybody, but I wanted to show you just how powerful this material is in the real world in these type of settings, because these are the type of settings that I know that you'll be performing this stuff. So join me inside and I'll capture a few of the performances. And now just imagine that that feeling travels from there into your wrist, into your arm, up into your shoulder and into your throat. And at the thought of saying your own name, it just sort of feels a little bit like, there it is, do you feel it? <laughs> How weird does that feel? Try saying your own name. <laughs> What's his name? Louis. Are you all right? Yeah. How weird is that making you feel? Making you feel weird? Yeah. Take a deep breath in. Try one more time to say your name. And look, watch. Now you can, what is it? How strange is that, Connor? Like, eyes watering. Take a deep breath, you're all right. Lay out, there you shake. Go like this with your hands. That's it. You're good to go, Connor. I'll take that pen back, thank you. And that's it, so it's easy as that. You put your food down as well. We're going to play a game. It's a very, very easy game. So I want everybody that wants to participate to go like this with your hands. Everybody put your hands out in front of you like this. You put your hands together, you lock your fingers tight like this. And I want you to ignore the music outside if you can and just listen to the sound of my voice. So as you take a deep breath in, let it fill up your lungs and then slowly let out. And what you're going to notice is as I'm talking to you, your left hand's going to push into your right hand. Your right hand's going to push into your left hand and it's going to start to feel like it gets firmer and firmer. You can feel that, right? And you can feel it and you start feeling it as it just starts to get firmer and firmer and firmer. Give me a nod when you start to feel it getting tighter. You feel it. Look, she can feel it. It's really weird. It's happening to quite a few of you. Watch as it gets tighter and tighter and tighter. Keeping your arms locked as I touch them, it becomes welded, bonded, stuck locked tight together keeping your arms locked to me you can feel that right come here turn around in front of everybody turn around here turn 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 keeping your hands locked watch how white the knuckles start to become as they start to become tighter and tighter and tighter keeping your eyes open and focused on it give me a nod when you know you can't separate them everybody else starts to feel tighter as well try take your hands apart Hello, hold your hands back out. Try again. Watch everybody's faces. Try again. And look, watch. You can now. And watch. That feeling goes from there. It travels into your wrist. Yeah, up into your arm, to your shoulder, and into your throat. Look forwards. And at the thought of saying your own name, what starts to happen is, it starts to feel like it's sticking like your hand. So imagine thinking about saying your name as that starts to feel like it's just going. Feel it. 
It starts to feel really weird. Watch their faces. Take a deep breath in for me. And when I snap my fingers, just close your eyes down. Take a deep breath in. Close your eyes down. Now, relax. Take, let your head come forwards. You can just stand there for a second. You're not going to fall. Just take a deep breath in. Now, you'll start to notice yourself swaying. And as you do that, your name starts to feel like it's slowly disappearing from your head bit by bit. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to open your eyes. And when you open your eyes, I'm going to ask you to try to say your name. And when I do that, it's going to be completely gone from your head. Not if you understand. The more you try, the harder it becomes. So take a deep breath. You're not going to fall. You're standing. Slowly lay out. And when I count from one to three, open your eyes. One, two, three, open your eyes. Now watch their faces here. Try saying your name. <laughs> How weird is that? You can say anything else. What's his name? Lewis. Lewis. Josh. Try saying your own. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely, you just <laughs> don't know where it is, right? I'll tell you, what's her name? How old is she? 21. <laughs> but what's your name? I don't know why you're laughing. If you look at me, yours is gone. You try saying yours. <laughs> try take your hands apart. <laughs> you can say anything else. What's her name? Emma. Can you take your hands apart? <laughs> try say your own name. And watch, you can now. What's your name? Lewis. You can... Lewis, there we go. You take a deep breath in and look. You can say yours. What's yours? Emma. Emma, give her a round of applause. She goes back. How crazy is that? You go stand back over there, Emma. You can go back over there. Go stand over there. I think for this, I'm going to use. I'm going to use you. So you stand here for me. Turn around this way. Stand like this. Put your feet together for me. Feet together. Take one step to the left. That's the left. This left. There we go. Right, look this way. You're all right. Now you see that light that I've put up there above the lamps. Yeah. I want you to stare at that light, take a deep breath in, put your feet together for me, Jay. Look straight up there, and I'm going to pull you back as you take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath in, relax, and just sleep down. That's it, you're all right, Jay. You take a deep breath in for me, you just let your feet sit and relax flat like this for me. And just put your arm flat like that, just keeping your eyes closed, taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. So this is always my favourite bit, right? Because You've all seen me doing the mind reading stuff. You see me going around and getting inside people's heads and stealing stuff out of people's heads. But what I always think is really interesting is when you can't read somebody's mind. So you get them up on stage, there's 500 eyes just watching you and you can't get inside the head to tell them what they're thinking. And so I thought to myself, well, I need an insurance policy in these situations. So what I came up with is what you're about to see. So in a moment, I'm gonna ask Jay to wake up. I'm gonna put a thought inside his head I'm going to ask him to think of absolutely anything in the world and I'm going to tell him that he's thinking of an aeroplane. And when I do that, he'll believe that he had genuinely had a free choice. And when he believes he had a genuine free choice and I tell him what that is, watch him freak out. Because it means I don't have to do anything. I just have to put somebody in a state like this, tell him what I want to think, replace it with my own thought and the show's always successful. So. Keeping your eyes closed, Jay, taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out. In a moment, I'm going to ask you to think of absolutely anything in the world, not if you understand. When I ask you to think of anything in the world, you'll take a few seconds, you'll change your mind a few times, and you'll settle upon an aeroplane, not if you understand. But your brain won't tell you that I've told you to think of an aeroplane, you'll think it's a completely free choice, not if you understand. And in a moment, when I ask you to get up, you're not going to remember being laid out on the floor. You're not going to remember any of this. You'll think that you literally just stood up. You just came over. And I'm just asking you to think of something for the first time. Not if you understand. Take a deep breath in. I'm going to lift you back up. And when you get back on your feet, that's the moment you'll start to be conscious again. So take a deep breath in. Lay it out slowly on the count of one to three. Slowly open your eyes. One, two, three. Just open your eyes. Come up here for a second. And the moment you get up, you'll get conscious again. We're good. You just stand there. So Jay, putting your feet together for me. Thank you for helping me out. So if you were to ask everybody here that obviously know that you just came from here and you stood here, you can relax, take a deep breath, you're all right. Jay, fairly skeptical towards stuff like this. You don't think that I could read your mind. I mean, you said that earlier on, that if I tried reading your mind, you'd never be able to read me. That's what you said, right? Yeah. Are you up for a little game? Oh, yeah. I'll bet you 1,000 pounds. £1,000 that you can think of anything in the world and I'll try to guess where it is. The only rule is that you have to be honest. Yeah. 
So take your time, think of absolutely anything in the world. Change your mind as many times as you want and then settle upon one thing that you feel that nobody in this room could ever know. Yeah. Go Do you want to change your mind again? No. Is there any way that I could know this? No. No way. Is there any way that anybody else could know this? No. If I told you this, would that be enough to freak you out? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're only going to know by your reaction. And if I do get it and you do react, they're going to go mad as well. Give me a hand. Turn it over. So I feel straight away looking. This is a fairly big thing, right? Yeah. I'll tell you what, this might be more fun. Turn this way and look at everybody in the room. And everybody, when I count to three, is going to read your mind and they're going to shout what it is. And we all get to enjoy your reaction, if they're right. So just transmit it to everybody else in the room. When I count from one to three, everybody, if you know what it is, shout it out. So one, two, three. Hey, hey come with man. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to give me, you can keep it. Give him a round of applause. For him. Thank you for playing, Jay. Thank Never really believed in uh, hypnosis, if I'm honest. I always thought it was a little bit of a... Uh, sort of thing that people do when they've had a few beers and they want to show off in front of the mates. I think I saw him hypnotise one person in about five seconds flat and I, I didn't know he'd done it. Nobody at the table knew he'd done it. In fact, uh, his uncle Neil swears blind that all his mentalism tricks are done by hypnosis, that he basically goes in, hypnotises everybody, does these mentalist tricks and then brings everybody around. Pete's not just a very good friend of mine, which he has been for many, many years, but uh, people all over the world regard Pete Turner as the best in the world, which if you see his, his routines, you'll understand exactly why. I hope you've enjoyed watching this stuff as much as I've enjoyed performing it. I know you're about to jump into the explanations, but there's only one thing that I ask before you do. Yes, you can open the box and perform this stuff right out of the gate, but please respect it. Please practice and rehearse. I've devoted myself to this craft since as long as I can remember. And this material has been a staple of my identity for years, and it will be for years to come. All I'm asking is that you rehearse this stuff. You give it the respect it deserves. Just because you can perform it out of the box doesn't mean that you should. And I think that if you put in the work now, you know, if you're not that confident when you start out, a couple of things go wrong, that's great because you'll learn from it. If you put in the hard work now, this stuff will serve you well for years to come. And I want to close by thanking you for backing this project and being a part of my journey. Enjoy the explanations. Mm -hmm.